Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the beta for Ghost Recon Breakpoint that was available this past weekend, and seeing how it compares both visually and from a gameplay perspective to Ubisoft's previous title, Ghost Recon Wildlands. For this comparison, I'll be running both games on the PC with the settings pushed as high as possible at a 1440p resolution, and in order to improve the clarity of the image, the motion blur settings will be disabled in both games. Before we get started, bear in mind that Ghost Recon Breakpoint is currently in its beta state, and therefore could potentially change by the time the final code releases. This is just an observation of what Ubisoft has managed to accomplish so far, and not necessarily any sort of competition. Alright, so to kick this comparison off, let's take a look at the quality of the character models available in both games. To do this properly, I tried my best to create an identical character in both games, with the same clothing, accessories, face, and hair. And right away, we can see some major differences here. The character model in Breakpoint looks substantially better in just about every way, with a more complex facial design, more intricate detailed hair, and more realistic proportions. The only thing that can be argued looks better in Wildlands is the way the ambient light reflects off of the character's face, giving the skin tone more accurate coloration, whereas the lighting in Breakpoint makes the model look washed out and lifeless. One of the most drastic improvements to Breakpoint is the quality of the character animations. Everything from the idle stance to the way he slides down slopes feels far more organic and realistic than before. However, there is a downside to the changes made here, as the player input feels less consistent. Just trying to make the character turn around 180 degrees takes a full 0.5 seconds longer to register, and sometimes it doesn't register at all. This is likely just a bug in this early build of the game, but even if the response time was improved, the overall timing of the animations does lend itself to a slower overall pace. This isn't necessarily the worst thing, as the pacing in Ghost Recon games is typically slower, though for players that enjoy the fast-paced combat, this could be problematic. Next, let's look at the environments. Now, it's important to understand that while these two games appear similar, they take place in very different regions of the world, causing some drastic variances in the type of dirt, grass, and trees. Wildlands takes place in a massive Bolivian valley, complete with dense jungles, rocky cliffsides, snowy mountains, and even a massive salt lake all of which offer unique challenges for the player to overcome. Breakpoint, on the other hand, takes place on a fictional string of islands in the South Pacific. This island chain, referred to as Aurora, features plenty of its own biodiversity, including expansive swamps, forests, mountainsides, and what appears to be some desert-like regions hidden on the east side of the map. Due to the limited availability in the open beta, it's unclear exactly how diverse this new game world will be, or even how large it is but it does seem to be a roughly smaller map overall, and it could potentially have less variation in its environment as a result. However, all the four regions available in the beta did feature a surprising amount of depth when compared to Wildlands. Texture quality in general seems to be improved upon, with rocks appearing more rounded and natural as opposed to the more polygonal appearance in Wildlands, and the variety of textures used across the game surfaces help to create a much more believable looking environment. Grass, for example, appears significantly better now thanks to the more three-dimensional grass sprites and the excellent grass-based ground texture that blends in almost seamlessly to enhance the illusion. Even the trees seem to feature more detail, like vines growing around the trunks and an improved texture for the bark. It all feels and looks more authentic as a result, and is enhanced further by the addition of dynamic tessellation and displacement effects for things like dirt, mud, and sand. Next, let's talk about the lighting. The lighting in Ghost Recon Wildlands to this day still looks incredible at times, especially when traversing through the thick jungles on the northeastern side of the map, where light rays occasionally peek through the dense canopy and reflect off of the wet leaves on the ground. It's one of the very few examples of a jungle done properly in a video game. Breakpoint, however, doesn't necessarily have the best opportunity to showcase this same effect, as the most jungle-like environment available in the beta seems to feature a mix of tall tropical trees and mountain-based foliage, creating a very different overall feel. The lighting still looks plenty impressive, and the overall tone of the scene still feels excellent. However, I did find that the god ray effects seem to be a bit exaggerated. There are times where these enhanced god rays look great, even better than in Wildlands. However, they seem to frequently clip straight through treetops in the more dense environments, and have an odd shimmering effect that doesn't seem consistent. The lighting in general just feels too bright. Even in the middle of the day, out in the wide open environment, the skyline appears to be glowing, which really throws off the overall contrast. It'll be interesting to see if any of this changes with the full release, but I do feel as though the god rays and bloom should be toned down just a bit so that the presentation doesn't look as washed out and colorless. Shadows on the other hand do seem to have been improved a little bit here. 
While the player shadows seem to exhibit the same soft edges with that light shimmering effect when viewed up close, the environmental shadows seem to be handled better, with softer edges to things like tree leaves and branches, and an increased maximum shadow render distance. Next up, let's look at some effects, starting with explosions. The explosive effects have also been improved in Breakpoint, with much higher resolution fireballs and almost double the amount of particle effects. The particles themselves also appear smaller, and dirt now realistically kicks up along with the explosion, only further adding to the effect. Wildlands explosions never looked particularly good, so it's great that this effect has been improved upon. The fire effects have also been improved, again with higher resolution flames and more dense smokestacks, though for some reason the fire from a destroyed vehicle fades a bit faster now. Water effects have also seen a huge improvement in Breakpoint. While the surface of the water does appear sort of blurry, water seems to exhibit more dynamic simulation this time around, and reacts realistically to the player's interaction. On top of this, the player model now properly holds his gun above the water surface when wading through the various rivers and swamps, only further adding to the authenticity. But one of the most impressive new effects in Breakpoint is the dynamic ground tessellation and displacement that I mentioned earlier. Birds can now leave visible prints in the wet ground that last a decently long time, and laying in this dirt can also cause the character model's clothes to become completely filthy. It's an incredible looking effect that works in tandem with the new camouflage feature, where players can cover themselves in dirt to hide from hostile patrols, which is probably one of the coolest additions to the series in years. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about the biggest changes to the gameplay design, starting with the new RPG light elements. This change is one that I'm not quite so sure about, as the Ghost Recon franchise seems like an odd place to begin incorporating the less realistic gear level based approach. Breakpoint features a gear level system, where collected and purchased weapons are associated with a specific gear score, and may perform poorly against higher level enemies, requiring the player to rank up and collect even more powerful weapons throughout the game. This means you could collect an M4 at the start of the game with a quarter of the damage output as an identical M4 found later on. Now, from what I've played, enemies seem to still die from single shots to the head, regardless of their level, but just like in Wildlands, they'll turn into bullet sponges once they're alerted, making open combat completely suicidal against higher level enemies. To account for this new RPG system, Breakpoint offers several new enemy types, including juggernauts with bulletproof face masks, flying drones, and large unmanned tanks. These larger robotic enemies will act as the bosses in Breakpoint, and feature a visible health bar to help keep track of their hit points. But as far as human enemies go, they do still seem to go down just as easily as in Wildlands. Breakpoint also features a new currency system to purchase clothing and weapons through an in-game store, a large community hub area similar to Destiny and The Division, the ability to craft consumable items, and more RPG-esque interactions with friendly NPCs during missions, including the clue-based mission objectives used in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It all feels a bit strange at first, though the experience overall seems to play and handle very similarly to Wildlands. To help deal with enemies, players can now initiate a few new takedown moves, including some deadly knife-based assassinations, and even a takedown from the prone position, a perfect option for players lying in wait covered in dirt. New to Breakpoint is the ability to carry bodies, a feature that was desperately needed for more stealth-oriented players in Wildlands. This new move is even extended to carrying teammates when they're injured, though the animation was bugged when I tried it in the beta, and seemed to only work about a third of the time. Also new to Breakpoint are the new survival-based mechanics. In this game's story, the ghosts are on the defensive, being hunted down by a skilled group of warriors across the island. This new plot direction has allowed for a more survival-esque approach to the gameplay design, with players needing to use bandages to heal up after being injured, and water bottles to restore stamina after an extended run. These are some interesting new immersive mechanics, though it remains to be seen just how this will impact the flow of the gameplay. Along with these survival features is the new Bivouac system, which replaces the much more basic fast travel points used in Wildlands. The Bivouac is basically a private campsite that can be set up at fixed points on the map, and can be unlocked simply by viewing the locations with binoculars or a drone from far away, much like how the fast travel system works in Ubisoft Winter Sports game Steep. While they can be used as simple fast travel points, players can also set up a camp with their friends and enable various buffs, like increased stamina or resistance to injuries. On top of this, players can also choose a specific time of day to deploy, a feature that is also available in Wildlands but wasn't available initially. Another major change to Breakpoint is the complete absence of a group of friendly AI squadmates. This is a big one, as the Ghost Recon franchise has featured squad members since its inception. According to Ubisoft, there are plans to patch in AI companions at a later date, but the fact that it's an afterthought suggests that the game was designed primarily to be played with other human players, and it's likely, just like in Wildlands, that the AI would just get in the way more than they should. 
triggering enemy alerts and failing to revive in a timely fashion. It's a surprising omission, but at the same time, it's possible Ubisoft is taking this extra time to refine the quality of the AI in order to make them more consistent and useful than they were last time, so at least there's that. The gameplay in Breakpoint overall seems to offer a ton of great immersive new features, which makes it all the more strange that Ubisoft decided to opt for the new RPG design of the gear and enemies. The experience seems to handle roughly the same way, with single headshots being enough to kill human enemies, but the new drone enemies could prove to be a unique challenge for Ghost Recon fans. Finally, let's do a quick sound comparison. Which game do you think has the better overall sound design? Frag out. Get some. <laughs> and that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Ghost Recon Breakpoint does seem to feature plenty of improvements over its predecessor. The character models look and move far more realistically than they do in Wildlands, though the weightier feel does take some getting used to. The environments also appear to be more detailed, with improved textures and overall greater texture variety. The lighting effects look incredible in some circumstances, often better than in Wildlands, though I do feel as though the bloom in God Rays could be toned down a bit overall. And the gameplay, while similar to Wildlands, seems to be a unique mix of more immersive hardcore survival tactics and some RPG-based leveling systems, which seems to work fine but will likely cause some confusion for old school fans of the franchise. But what do you guys think? Do you like the changes being made for Breakpoint, or do you prefer Wildlands? Let me know in the comments section. Also, be sure to stay tuned later this month for a full documentary on the history of Ghost Recon, from the original Red Storm classics all the way to the most recent Breakpoint set to release at the start of October. So be sure to hit the bell below and set up your alerts if you don't want to miss that. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.